is it? Of it. You are too. <laughs> right, Dad, can I show something funny? Just what? look in the cave for a moment. Okay, I'm looking in the cave. Hello. What are you doing over there? <laughs> Hello. Wow, there's a cave down there. Oh, yeah. This is the entrance, climbing down, uh -huh. and that's the cave all the way down there, so got a bit of climbing to do, mm -hmm. I'll have a look. Can hear some birds up there. We made it up the rocks. <laughs> Decent climb up. Uh huh. Oh. We'll keep going. I'm not too sure if it, the camera's picking much of it up because it's pretty dark in here, but we definitely should have bought our head torches on this one. This is way better than I thought it would be. This cave is massive. So we're about probably 20, 20 meters down from the top. Pretty hard, decent climb, so it takes a while. We are still going down. We're nearly at the bottom. Yep. But uh, yeah, very cool. Very cold and very wet down here. You can hear dripping. Okay. So yeah, we'll keep going. I think we're at the bottom. Stop. Actually, it keeps going back further, but I think that's about as far as we need to go. Wow, look at all the green up there, Mia. There's no bats, I don't think. Not at the moment. Wow, that is cool. Awesome. This is cool. So green. Everything's green and wet. And it keeps going back for probably another 30 meters. I think that's the end. I don't know if it keeps going. It's about um, probably about 10 meters high. Cool. Well, that, um, that first cave was absolutely awesome. Um, way better than I thought it was going to be, so we definitely should have bought head torches on this one. So the walk's easier than yesterday, and the caves are way better. So these are viaduct caves, or lava, oh. lava tubes. So, um, yeah, this one's not a long walk. So these caves, okay, we're nearly there, Don. These caves were formed from lava tubes. So the lava flowed this way from Mount Napier over there. And um, as the outside of the tube hardened and went cold, the inside kept flowing and kept it open. And eventually the roof sections have caved in. So that's, what, um, that's why we can see the caves now. So there's probably heaps of them out here that you actually can't see because the roofs haven't collapsed so but uh, yeah amazing caves massive very green very wet um, awesome definitely come and have a look at it viaduct caves the tower pock and warangort 
would almost certainly have been watching as the lava ran down this valley. They were in little danger as the lava flows typically advanced at about walking pace, although the lava stream in the central channels would have been faster. The Tapok Conadit, a clan of Dab Lurong tribe to the east of here. That was their name from the prominent volcanic peak Tapok, which Major Mitchell renamed. It's been scrubbed out here on this thing. The Rangcourt lived in the swampy country to the west of here and were a clan of Kunjitmara tribe. There is no evidence that they entered these caves. As at Lake Conda near Mount Eccles, these people built substantial huts. One at Buckley Swamp was described by George Augustus Robinson as a fine large double hut, 10 feet in diameter with two entrances and four feet high in the center, built of sticks closely packed together and covered with turf. The first European settlers arrived in this area in 1838 and established sheep stations in the area. They tried to exclude the local Aborigines from their main sources of food and water, and conflict was inevitable. These, the years that followed brought disease and relocation. By 1870, the local population of Indigenous Australians had been greatly reduced. Descendants of the Tapok and the Warangkort tribe still live in this area. Ooh, and story of the dry, dry stone walls. Wherever you see stony rises on the younger lava flows, you'll find these dry stone walls. With plentiful materials at the hand and labour cheap, a wall was made of stone was an obvious choice for pastoralists in the 19th century. The walls were built to contain stock, so as a protection against fires and later in an attempt to control rabbit plagues. Some walls also enclosed houses or were used as sheep yards. The remains of a small sheep fold lie on the uh, southern side of this valley. Constructions of the walls was done by two men working together from opposite sides. Dry stone means that no cement was used to hold the rocks together. The builders used their skill to balance and rest the rocks against each other so they did not fall apart. Construction progressed slowly at a rate of about two to three metres a day. The skilled craftsmen came from England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales and Cornwall. Often the craft was handed down from father to son. Alright, we were going to go for a walk up that hill all the way up behind me, um, Mount Napier. So that's where all this, um, all these lava flows came from that we've been looking at, at Biaduck and uh, Mount Eccles. Um, you can see we're on the edge of it, so just full of um, scoria and tuff. So we're probably either on a vent or, um, you know, the edge of the volcano. So, um, yeah, still pretty cool to see, but the walk up there is pretty big and the, um, the car park's at the very bottom, so um, probably a bit too much for me for today, uh, especially after yesterday's walk. Um, but yeah, this was the, that was the eruption point um, for all the lava tubes and caves that we've been looking at that have flowed east and then sort of out to the south, out to Portland. Um, but yeah, pretty cool and interesting and still got a bit of time so I might see if we can find somewhere else to um, explore but um, this is sort of looks like an old quarry just about maybe it is uh, maybe an old scoria quarry or something but um, it's just at the base of Mount Napier so yeah we'll keep uh, keep going <coughs> well that looks like a pretty big rock and it would weigh couple of hundred grams maybe. That is so light. Oops. There you go. And you can see because it was so hot when it was thrown out of the ground, all the gas bubbles are still there. Well, the bubbles from the gas are still there and that's why it's so light because half of it's just hollow. Pretty interesting. Yeah. 
See it over there, that's where all the lava came out of. So that's where we were at, at Mount Napier. Yeah, and now we're at a volcano. We're at another volcano, we're at Mount Rouse at Penhurst. We're on a lava rock. Don't fall off, mate. <laughs> Pretty cool view of town. That's the southern end of the Grampian, so Mount Abrupt. Driving down the back side of this um, volcano, there was a track with a gate open, so it's inviting me to drive in. So I had a bit of a drive around, and this is definitely an old scoria quarry, so it's abandoned now, but um, yeah, they would have been digging scoria out of here for a very long time. It's a pretty big hole. Um, so you can see behind me, there's like, uh, where are we, up here? So there's um, like coffee rock up top for the first metre or so, then it's into really black scoria. Um, so that's probably the edge of the scoria cone for the hill. Um, and then it's more purple and red into the bigger side of the hill over here. Um, but yeah, pretty massive. Um, yeah, love the colours of the um, like the rusty coffee rock stained down the front of the, the scoria. So yeah, we'll have a bit of a closer look.